This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony. If a picture is worth a thousand words, how many notes is it worth? Modest Mussorgsky's Pictures at an Exhibition is one of the most popular pieces of concert music ever written. Originally for solo piano, it has been arranged by dozens of musicians in dozens of different ways, from full orchestra to synthesizer, from solo accordion to Chinese orchestra, to the famous rock concept album by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. But the most famous version by far is the orchestration by Maurice Ravel, who found Mussorgsky's unpublished set of piano portraits and brought them to the conductor Serge Kusevitsky. Now, during his lifetime, Kusevitsky was responsible for commissioning some of the most important works of the 20th century, like Ravel's Concerto in G, Gershwin's Second Rhapsody, Copland's Symphony No. 3, and Britain's Peter Grimes. Kusevitsky immediately commissioned Ravel to write an orchestration of Mussorgsky's piano pieces. It premiered in Paris in October of 1922, and within a year, it had become one of the most performed pieces in the world. Ironically, Mussorgsky himself never heard his piano suite performed. He was the least refined, the least European of Russia's mighty handful. His friendships with Alexander Borodin and Mili Balakirev had brought him into that circle of composers, trying to create a truly Russian style of classical music. Mussorgsky was mostly self-taught as a composer, and he was proud of his status as an untrained diamond in the rough, although he had begun his career as a piano prodigy, and even during his teenage years in the military, he could always impress the ladies with his improvisations. Mussorgsky definitely had a gift for turning words and pictures into music, but perhaps because of the chip on his shoulder, perhaps because of a serious alcohol problem that would eventually kill him, he started far more music than he finished, and many of the works he did complete were smoothed out by well-meaning friends like Borodin, Glazunov, and even Tchaikovsky, who felt that Mussorgsky's originals were coarse, unpolished, and ugly. But it may be this very elemental Russianness that has made his work so popular and left behind more highly refined colleagues like Balakirev and César Cui. Mussorgsky met the artist Viktor Hartmann around 1870, and since Hartmann was looking to do for Russian art what Mussorgsky was doing for Russian music, they immediately became fast friends. Hartmann died suddenly just three years later, at the age of 37, and Mussorgsky was devastated. A year after that, the influential critic Viktor Stasov helped organize a showing of Hartmann's works at the St. Petersburg Academy of Fine Arts. That exhibition inspired Mussorgsky to write a set of solo piano pieces that he originally titled Hartmann as a memorial to his friend. It took him only six weeks to finish the ten sketches in the suite, although it wasn't published until 1886, five years after his death. The first public performance, five years after that, was also the very first orchestration. Pictures in an Exhibition charts the course of visitors strolling through a gallery of Hartmann's paintings, sketches, and architectural fantasies. The composer himself is one of the visitors, although probably a fictionalized alert Mussorgsky instead of the shambling and disoriented alcoholic of reality. This promenade theme acts as a musical museum guide, accompanying us from picture to picture as we make our way along. The first stop is Nomus. According to Viktor Stasov, this sketch represents a child's plaything, 
fashioned after Hartmann's design in wood for the Christmas tree at the Artists' Club. It is something in the style of the fabled nutcracker, the nuts being inserted into the gnome's mouth." End quote. This gnome may be a child's toy, but there is an air of menace about him, with heavy footsteps accompanied by savage shrieks. Each of the following promenades is a variation on the melody which opened the suite. Viktor Stasov says that Mussorgsky depicted himself roving through the exhibition, now leisurely, now briskly in order to come close to a picture that had attracted his attention, and at times sadly thinking of his departed friend. Next up on the tour, Il Vecchio Castello, the Old Castle. There was no item by this title in the original exhibition, but it probably refers to one of several architectural watercolors Hartmann painted on a trip to Italy. Here we see a ruined medieval castle with a troubadour singing a melancholy song outside the walls. This melody is also one of the earliest and most famous saxophone solos in orchestral music. We're walking, we're walking to an abbreviated promenade which leads to the Tuileries. This is the park in Paris, swarming with children and their nurses. Next up is Bilo, which is Polish for cattle. This picture represents a lumbering ox cart. We hear it approach, it gets closer and louder, finally rattling by and then fading into the distance. Another melancholy promenade is interrupted. by the ballet of the chicks in their shells. This was one of Hartmann's costume designs for a ballet. In this scene with child dancers, canaries are enclosed in eggs as in suits of armor, with canary heads put on like helmets. Mussorgsky had in his collection two drawings by Hartmann that depicted two Jewish men, one rich, one poor. He gave them the names Samuel Goldenberg and Schmoyl when he wrote his suite. There's a particularly difficult passage for the right hand in this piece, which Ravel turned into an equally difficult trumpet solo. In Mussorgsky's piano original, there's another promenade here, but Ravel omits it, leading directly to the marketplace at Limoges, with groups of old women quarreling and haggling. The 
catacombs is a picture that shows the interior of the catacombs under the streets of Paris with eerily glowing skulls. The music falls into two sections, Sepulchrum Romanum, or Roman Sepulchres, which Ravel turned into a somber brass chorale. And Cum Mortuis in Lingua Mortua, which translates as with the dead in a dead language. It's a ghostly transformation of the promenade theme with shimmering strings adding to the chilly atmosphere. The Hut on Fowl's Legs is a tour de force for both orchestra and piano solo. The picture shows a fantastical clock shaped like a hut with roosters' heads standing on chicken legs. In Russian folklore, this was the hut of the witch Baba Yaga. who flew around the countryside in a mortar in search of children who would become her victims. <music> Baba Yaga's flying hut runs straight into the final stop on our tour. Hartmann's architectural design for the Great Gate of Kiev. He created it for a competition to design a magnificent city gate in commemoration of Tsar Alexander II's narrow escape from assassination. The gate itself was never built, but Hartmann's design lives on in Mussorgsky's powerful portrait. It's curious that Mussorgsky's friend Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov, who literally wrote the book on orchestration, never tackled pictures at an exhibition. It fell to Maurice Ravel, as refined in French as Mussorgsky was coarse in Russian, to capture the public's imagination with a version that is a model of technical brilliance, imaginative insight, and respect for the stark but vivid imagery of Mussorgsky's piano original. This is Rick Malone for the San Francisco Symphony.